take a look at these two spices. This is cinnamon and this is ginger. What are they called in your native language? Here are some terms for cinnamon and ginger in different languages. Cinnamon is known as dalchini in Hindi and in Marathi and patta in Tamil. Ginger is known as adrak in Hindi, inji in Tamil, ada in Odia and shunti in Kannada. Say if you are a person who speaks Hindi but not any other language. If you want to convey to another person that you are talking about cinnamon, and your brain goes on a brain freeze and you're not able to figure out the English word, how would you be able to communicate to them? And let's forget about this for a minute and concentrate on a global level. Say you've done some research about the medicinal properties of ginger and you're presenting your research at an international event that has delegates from all over the world like France and Germany. Those people certainly will not understand the word adrak when you're talking about ginger. If only there was a way to name these spices, these plants and the other organisms on earth in a way that can be easily understood by everybody, all the scientists, all biologists in the world, that would be fantastic, right? That is what is binomial nomenclature. This is the method by which each organism is given its scientific or Latin name. I'll explain in just a while why it is called Latin name. Now this nomenclature, this need for nomenclature is not something new. It has been there for a long time, even before 1700s. A lot of organisms were being discovered or classified at that time and people were fighting about how to name those organisms. And it was Carl Linnaeus, who was a biologist who lived during the 1700s, who came up with this binomial nomenclature method of naming organisms. Binomial nomenclature here, binomial means it has two parts. You might have heard this term in being used in maths as well. Not just Carl Linnaeus, there have been other biologists who have contributed to the nomenclature of organisms. But Carl Linnaeus is thought to be the forerunner of nomenclature because he was the one who finalized or formalized this binomial method of nomenclature. Now, when we're talking about naming organisms, you cannot just name it any way you want to. There are certain codes or regulations set forth by different organizations like there is the International Code for Botanical Nomenclature or ICBN which is involved in the nomenclature of plants. There is the International Code for Zoological Nomenclature ICZN for animals. And because ICBN was already taken, the International Code for Nomenclature of Bacteria or ICNB for the nomenclature of bacteria and other microorganisms. Now, when we're talking about nomenclature, we cannot ignore why it is important. It is mainly important because it makes the classification of organisms very easy. Classifying is when we try to categorize an organism into different taxons or in different groups, which family it belongs to, which phylum it belongs to and all that. When you name an organism using a specific method, it becomes easy to, you know, trace its evolutionary history and also to compare its evolutionary history with other organisms. It also solves the major problem of, you know, different organisms having different names around the world. It creates a unique, easily distinguishable name for each organism so that it cannot be confused with any other organism, even if it is related very close to another organism. Even if they two belong to the same genus, the two species cannot be misunderstood with one another because they have unique names identifying each of them. There are some rules or codes that are common between all these organizations. So let's take a look at some of those rules. First is that the names of the organisms are written in Latin or are derived from Latin, which is why they are known as Latin names. Second, the binomial nomenclature means two parts, right? I told you, right? The first part is the generic or the genus name of that organism. And the second name is the species epithet. For example, boss taurus is the scientific name for cattle, cow and bull. Here, the word boss stands for the generic or the genus name of the species. And taurus is the species epithet. 
third the way in which the name is written differs from when it is printed or handwritten if it is printed it needs to be in full italics or if it is handwritten it needs to be underlined separately so if it is boss taurus it needs to be underlined like this separately last but not least the first letter of the genus is capitalized you can see that i have capitalized this letter b in the word boss but there is no capitalization in the species epithet taurus is written just like that in all lower case before we see some examples of scientific names of different organisms let's take a look at why latin is being used in binomial nomenclature even though it is a dead language nobody speaks it anymore so in olden days why latin was used is because it was the common language for scientists it was known as the language of enlightenment why is it still used now because latin considered to be a dead language does not evolve or change with time you see language as it is has the ability to evolve or change with time the english language and other languages around the world have changed a lot over time and usage but because nobody speaks latin anymore and it is considered to be a dead language latin does not change with time a word in latin that meant something 400 500 years back still means the same and will still mean the same 500 years into the future that's why latin and terms derived from latin are still being used in binomial nomenclature For example you see here this is the latin or the scientific name for humans homo sapiens this is entirely in latin homo in latin means human and sapiens means wise so this so this scientific name for humans will never change because the words homo and sapiens will mean the same even in the future now there are of course exceptions to using latin there are other languages like greek and even sanskrit used in binomial nomenclature for example this is a scientific name of the sandalwood tree santalum album now this santalum is a word in latin that has been derived from sanskrit the word for the sandalwood in sanskrit is chandanam it still is chandanam right we still use chandanam in hindi as well A lot of scientific names even use the names of famous people or places where the organism is commonly found and a lot of other crazy stuff as well. So let's take a look at some examples of scientific names. So here you have Panthera leo which is the scientific name for lion. This can be distinguished from Panthera tigris which is the scientific name for tiger. So this is how we know that Panthera leo and Panthera tigris belong to the same genus Panthera but they are of different species. Canis lupus is the scientific name for wolf. Canis familiaris is the scientific name for the domesticated dog. Again, this is how we know that wolves and dogs are of the same genus. Tamarindus indica is the scientific name for the tamarind tree. Here indica is derived from the Latin word for India. This is because this tree was commonly found is commonly found in India and another example for this is Mangifera indica which is the latin name for mango and here is a crazy example of a person's name being incorporated in the binomial nomenclature there is a species of spider that is found in some parts of India that is known as Marengo Sachin Tendulkar which is named after cricket or Sachin Tendulkar <laughs> so cool isn't it just imagine when you grow up and you decide to become a scientist or a biologist and you are out there exploring the wilderness and you discover a new species and you can even decide to name it after yourself and this is all about binomial nomenclature